Today we're doing a whole house repipe. I'm gonna walk you through the materials we're using, kind of the problems that got us out here in the first place and what we're doing to fix it and the processes we go about to replace all of the water lines inside of this house. So we were originally called out for a slab leak that was affecting one fixture in the house and one pipe underground. Instead of just replacing that one pipe that has failed, we are instead replacing all the pipes in the house, running everything up and overhead to get it out of the slab to help prevent that wear and tear that happens from the concrete. Um, this is often a more cost-effective way of going about it because once you have one slab leak in one place, you're very likely to have another slab leak in another location of the house. And so we often recommend if the customer is able to, to replace everything in the whole house all at once, instead of having to replace one line every year or every couple of years, if we can get everything up and overhead, replace it with good PEX type A throughout the house, that's gonna last a whole lot longer than anything running through the slab. So whole house repipe, step one, we're gonna cut a hole at each fixture to give us access to change out the pipes that are running to the fixture. And then we're gonna run everything up and overhead, drop that down the walls, and then we'll be able to tie in at each fixture to complete that repipe and get water to everywhere throughout the house. So the problem with both Kitec and Fostapex pipe is that they have rings of aluminum inside of the pipe. That aluminum degrades over time and then it also creates friction on that pipe. Um, so there's issues with that pipe running through the slab um, as that slab is moving around. And then there also has issues at each fitting with fittings degrading over time quicker than the new stuff that we'll be putting in. So it's best to get that out of your house if you have it. We do know if we do a repipe in one neighborhood or a reroute in one neighborhood, if houses are built by the same builder, it's more than likely that all of the houses in this neighborhood have Kitec piping in it. So we'll often end up spending a couple days at one house and then spend a couple more days at another house down the street. I have to run to another job, so I'm gonna pass everything over to our journeyman out here, Armando, um, and he'll show you the rest of the process. There he is. There he is. All right, my name's Armando. We got here three hours ago. We have ran all the water lines up through the attic. So right now we have to jump up there and run our trunk line, do all our branching off. This is a two, two, two full bath, kitchen, uh, ice maker, washing machine, two hose bibs, and a water heater. It's 11 o'clock, should be wrapping up today, somewhere around six or seven, fully done from start to finish. So we use PEX piping. Number one, it's cost effective. People do request us to do everything in copper, we can, but with the price of copper compared to this, there's a lot more cost effective as a homeowner. And also, once we get into tight spots, we don't have to be bending the pipe. As, as you can tell, it is pretty flexible and nothing will like that won't damage it. Um, compared to copper where you can't do that, and if you do, you'll run the risk of kinking it and then causing a leak. With this being flexible, as flexible as it is, it allows us to make harder to do turns than then. The least joints we have up in the attic, the least fail points it has, which is also kind of a little bit more peace of mind. And this is actually, once it freezes, if it ever does freeze, it'll actually have some space to expand. And then once the water inside of it thaws out, it'll go back to its original size compared to copper, PVC, or CPVC. If anything freezes inside of it, it'll just crack the pipe. So up in the attic, before we got up there, first of all, we ran all of our pipes upwards so we knew where they were at. When we got up there, we ran a main trunk line in between. Everything kind of worked out as everything was either on the left or on the right. We ran that trunk line in the middle, teed into it, and then we got all that done. Once we have the water on and verify there's no leaks, what we'll do is insulate and strap the pipe, but we want to verify there's no leaks before we do that because once you insulate, they're kind of, if it's a small drip, you won't see it till it's too late. So that's gonna be a last thing we do. So we just turned the water off. We have everything up in the attic ran. We have the drops made. We're gonna start taking apart all the angle stops so we can put our new ones in. Then we can do our last connections. The reason we kind of do this at the end is so the water is off as little time as possible. People aren't kind of handicapped with no water. 
and they can kind of just go about their day. So that's what we're working on now. <clears throat> we're gonna start by connecting the main, put a valve out there so we can shut the water off a lot quicker than doing it out here. And then we're gonna, like I said, go inside, put all the angle stops together, make sure everything's pressed on, turn the water back on. And once we get that done, we're gonna work on the heater to get that going. As uh, so we do have to work in that closet a little bit, but shouldn't be very much longer there without water. All right, so this is a piece of Kitech. Not sure how well you can pick that up on the camera, but there's that blue plastic, then there's metal inside, and then there's plastic again. This is the pipe that's been outlawed a couple years back. So it's another one of the reasons as to why we're doing this repipe to get all of this taken care of and you know have a proof pipe in the house. We've cut the Kitech that was in the wall. Um, it came to a termination here where it comes to copper. So what we're gonna do is gonna press on a transition from copper to PEX, and then we'll reuse the same holes that were already pre-drilled to run our hose over. So they'll have an accessible shutoff here, so they don't have to go all the way to the meter and mess with that, or mess with their homeowner shutoff they have out there. This is essentially where they'll be able to come in and turn the water on and off if ever needed to. So we ordered 240 feet of each pipe, and we have we have about 80 feet left of each, but that's also, we haven't finished everything. So far, we probably used like 160-ish. So this is the incoming water pipe. Uh, but this is, essentially this is gonna be feeding into the softener. Then from the softener, shoot through here. We make this bypass. For example, today we're not going to be hooking it up as a different company hooked this up and they don't want us touching it for warranty issues, which we understand. So what we're doing here is once we have the water on, we'll keep this one on, these shut. Water would just be bypassing instead of going to the softener and they're back out. It'll be coming in through here and then out to the house. But for now, we'll keep this closed. Um, this one right here is going to be feeding into the softener, hence as to why this is going with flow of water. And then this one's going out going again flow of water and then this one since coming from here being fed on this side going this way flow of water too it's common practice to do that way people kind of know where water is flowing i'm also going to label them for the plumbers that come behind us to hook this softener back up so that way they don't have to be doing any guessing you might be wondering why there's a hole right here that's where the previous pipes came out so till we get them out because we don't like to leave anything in the walls left behind we put them cut this out so we can remove them that's why there's an extra hole and I want somebody to talk about my Insta. <laughs> so we verify that we tighten the right side and the way, even if you're by yourself, when you turn this on and we have open pipes, if we had plumbed this in the wrong, the wrong side, we would have, this would have never stopped making the hissing noise because the hissing noise essentially just, water's trying to fill the pipe. Once the hissing noise stops, you kind of know everything's capped off at one end. So, they're gonna have, to the whole house is gonna be that ball valve, because after that we have the hose bib. But if for any reason they ever have to shut water off and they still wanna have the hose attached, they would just have to come and shut this. Obviously I'm not gonna open it because we have, the whole house is still open. Um, but this is gonna be the bypass for the softener. All right, so we just got wrapped up out here in Kyle, Texas. We got this house completely repiped in one day. Took out everything that we could as far as everything coming up through the slab. Kitek, as we mentioned before, everything is now ran overhead with PEX. All angle stops, everything's ready to go. Everything's insulated. We also threw in a new water heater and that's all wrapped up. All we have to do now is clean up, but they have good pressure now and they don't have any more leaks. Verify that. We did a hydrostatic for a couple minutes here so we can make sure that even a small drip we wouldn't be affecting the house or we wouldn't miss something above in the attic, but everything's ready to go. So yeah, all we have to do now is clean up. If you ever need your house repiped, don't hesitate to give us a call. We're experts, we'd love to help you out.